Hey, Internets. A lot of people in light of recent world events, particularly the spike in violence surrounding the Israeli-Gaza conflict, have been very surprised to find out that many people on the far left not only support the Palestinian side of the conflict, but are even apologetic for the actions of Hamas. As if the Palestinian side just has no choice but to allow Hamas to be the dominant political group in their area. And since Hamas is the only ones fighting for their freedom, they just can't bring themselves to condemn the actions of Hamas. Even when Hamas decides to randomly kidnap random innocent civilians and then just torture them and kill them for basically no reason. Other than enemy team bad. Big yikes. And this of course is happening much to the dismay of everyone else, with even the poor center lefties completely baffled by these utterly insane pro-terrorism takes. The poor confused normies. And so I'm going to help them out. In this video I'm going to explain why the far left's position on this conflict actually makes perfect sense. Now of course allow me to clarify, by the phrase makes perfect sense, I absolutely do not not mean that they are correct. I mean that if you understand how far leftists think in comparison to everyone else, particularly if you understand what specifically separates someone on the far left from someone who is center left, then you will understand why their seemingly bizarre takes on the Palestine conflict are in fact exactly what you would expect from them. In other words, their inability to condemn Hamas is actually a feature, not a bug, of far left reasoning. And thus the Hamas apologetics are in fact exactly what you would expect. They are very wrong takes, but they are expected takes. Now before I go any further, I just want to first give a quick rundown of the Israel-Palestine conflict for anyone who is not up to speed. TLDR of it is that the Jews and the Palestinians in the Israel region don't get along because they both want to claim the same territory for their holy land. This of course creates a conflict over competing nationalist desires that are extremely complex and difficult to solve because of the religious context in them, makes it so that even if you could generate objective, undeniable evidence over who rightfully owns the land, the other side would probably still not accept that evidence due to the context of the situation. And so the solution as put forth numerous times by both the United Nations and the United States is the two-state solution, which while not a perfect solution, it would at least create a new property rights contract that would bring somewhat of an end to the conflict. This solution, for varieties of reasons, has unfortunately failed several times, and thus the Israeli-Palestinian conflict goes on, resulting in multiple military violent conflicts over the years, with the most recent one, where Hamas kidnapped and murdered hundreds of random innocent civilians. Also, for those of you who don't know, Hamas is not just some random ragtag group of terrorists. They are, in fact, the dominant political faction of Palestine, specifically the Gaza Strip with Hamas also holding the majority of the seats within the Palestinian Legislative Council. So it actually makes the most sense to view Hamas as the military faction of Palestine rather than just a terrorist group. Now, as for my personal take on this conflict, well, Israel is definitely not completely innocent, as they do indeed regularly enact state-backed discrimination of Palestinians, basically treating them as second- or third-class citizens on a legislative level. And the Israeli government often uses this very dishonest tactic of these absurd, false accusations of anti-Semitism to deflect from criticism of their actions. However, I do play most of the blame on Hamas. Palestine, and the Arab region's mentality towards Israel in general. The reason for why I mostly blame them for this is very simple. On the majority of the occasions when the two-state solution to end the conflict over the property was proposed, the Israeli side was willing and ready to sign the peace deal, but Palestine refused. The issue here comes down to the fact that too many Palestinians, along with basically all of Hamas, believe that the Jews should get nothing. This is an absurd, childish, my way or the highway position, which completely prevents peace from ever being achieved. In order to maintain this position, Hamas often uses their position to brainwash Palestinians into a state of basically perpetual irrational rage. If you think I am wrong on this take, just look up the Hamas TV show Tomorrow's Pioneers and watch a bit of it, and you will quickly understand the mentality behind what is preventing this conflict from ending and why a peace deal still has not been achieved, and unfortunately most likely will not be achieved. So then, how is it that so many on the far left are in support of the Palestinian side, with many of them even condoning the actions of Hamas murdering random innocents? I mean, isn't this just completely bizarre and backwards from what you would normally expect in Western politics? Well, no, in fact. There are several reasons for how this came to be, each of which touch on a core component on far left, and in some cases, Maoist thought. 
The first of these is just the dogma of racism equals prejudice plus power being applied to a different population. Or in other words, only the Jews can be racist because they're the ones who have the power over the predominantly Arabic Palestinians. So when Hamas does something wrong, it is therefore freedom fighting and decolonization. They are the poor oppressed minority and thus they can do no wrong. This is of course incredibly stupid reasoning that completely ignores the fact that the innocent people who are being killed have nothing to do with this and that the power dynamics of the collective don't really apply to them and don't really matter in the context of someone being kidnapped and tortured. But because the far left is largely collectivist in how they think, they are thus logically forced to find some way to find apologetics for this kind of ridiculous behavior. This is largely what I alluded to before in my video on leftist racism. Because the far left views racism through the lens of collective guilt, they are unable to properly condemn acts of evil based on collective guilt without contradicting themselves. So all the left is really doing here is applying the same war to views of race that they have in the West, and they're applying these same views to the Jews. Which to an outsider, this may seem completely nonsensical and may seem like these people on the far left are doing a total 180 on their stance against anti-Semitism, when in reality the far left is just being consistent with their views on collectivism. Again, it is a stupid view, it is a wrong view, but also entirely not surprising that they have this view. The second issue is that the far left generally doesn't understand property crimes. For instance, if someone were to steal your wallet and then run away from you into a crowded parking lot, do you have the right to break out your AR-15 and just indiscriminately fire a spray of bullets out there, potentially hitting innocents as you try to get your wallet back? No, of course not, because that kind of response just creates new crimes in order to try and fix the other crime. The people in that crowded parking lot are not collectively guilty for the guy who stole your wallet, so you can't just glass them. And this is the primary problem with how Hamas does their business. Even if we were to assume that the Palestinian side and Hamas are completely correct in their property rights claim to the Israeli land and that Israel does not have a right to exist anywhere in the southern Levant region, it still wouldn't matter. The actions of Hamas by attacking innocent civilians simply creates a new human rights crimes, rather than resolving the property rights claim. This ensures the cycle of violence continues, and is the main reason why Hamas should be condemned and rightfully seen as the deranged maniacs they basically are. Now, most lefties are perfectly capable of understanding why spraying bullets into a crowd of people just to get your wallet back from one of them is wrong, but when you scale the problem up to their collectivist way of thinking, once again, this causes them to become confused. They get so fixated on the forest that they forget that it is made of trees. So to them, what Hamas is doing is not an act which creates new property rights violations, but rather it is just a collective act of resistance against the evil colonialist powers. This is of course completely idiotic, as innocent people being killed in any context incentivizes the family members of the innocent person killed to respond with additional violence of their own. This is not a difficult concept to comprehend. But of course the far left denies both property rights and incentives to the point of often outright denying praxeology, completely preventing themselves from understanding how and why they are supporting the side that is preventing this conflict from ending. Which speaking of how hate leads to violence, that brings me to my third pointer which is that wokeness is often just a front for hate. Within my own definition of wokeness, which is an aggressive push for diversity, equity, inclusion, usually based on the belief that outcomes which lack these things are indicative of discrimination and or unfair social treatment, there's a very big reason why I include the word usually there. Because there is absolutely a useful idiot and unironically evil dichotomy at play here. On one hand, you have your true believers in the beautiful lie of equality, who truly do see a lack of DEI as proof of discrimination, but on the other side, you you definitely have people for who these things are just a way to justify their hatred. There is absolutely a handful of people who are woke simply as a post hoc justification for their hatred of whatever group they view as the privileged trademark. And their claims of DEI are simply a pseudo-intellectual excuse to try and flip the social hierarchy with themselves at the top. So in Western countries, this often translates into hatred of white people and anti-white racism, while in Israel, this translates to anti-Semitism. This is all, again, very stupid, very deranged ways of thinking. But again, it is entirely in line with what you would expect from modern progressive thought. So when you see this meme posted by Destiny, it's really just two sides of the same coin. It is 100% perfectly in line with woke toy dogma. So again, as utterly ridiculous as it seems, entirely 100% expected. It's just that the Israeli-Palestine conflict happens to be one specific geopolitical event where it's very difficult for those on the unironically evil side of the coin to prevent their mask from slipping, and prevent the masses from realizing that their DEI dogma is really just a 
grift and that many of them don't actually believe it. Or to quote myself from an ex post I made earlier, some are true believers in the DEI equality grift, while for others these things are simply words that they flap out of their mouths to justify their spite. Yes, in the end, wokeness really is just a grift to justify a power grab. That reach for utopian equality is really just the false justification that they put on paper. Which brings me to my final point on this, which is that they often have this muck colonialism and the ends justify the means mentality. So a lot of the militant colonialism that happened in the past was indeed wrong, and, and leftists aren't wrong when they say that. However, it did have positive effects. And because of this, it's very silly for people to still whine about ma colonialism to this day. However, you can still at least recognize that on a principled level, it was wrong. This is largely why I am not a utilitarian. Because people who follow utilitarian ethics strictly often have a hard time wrapping their heads around this concept. And this is where the far left steps in with their decolonization and the ends justify the means mentality. Because most of the far left are in fact very strict utilitarians. And so when you add this in with all the other problems in their basket, such as the belief of racism equals prejudice plus power, along with the collective guilt, and along with their failure to understand property crimes, it all just kind of combines into this really silly way of thinking where the poor Palestinians just have no choice but to support Hamas. Because what they're doing is fighting towards the goal of decolonization. To show what I mean by this, I'll just clip this incredible top mind take from brilliant IQ 200 intellectual Hassan Abbey. Like, look at this guy. You know what shouldn't happen? Killing 260 people at a music festival. No, you're right, man. That just happened on its own because, like, bad guys wanted to do bad things. You're right. Dude, if they fucking subjugated you to a open air prison your whole fucking life you're gonna break out eventually when you realize that there is no other way to get out of it do you think that this happened out of nowhere do you think this happened out of thin air are you fucking stupid do you think the the israeli state was just like peacefully coexisting and then these guys came in with fucking gliders out of nowhere don't say fuck off, dude. They didn't deserve it, you fucking idiot. My goal is solutions. Your goal is the continuation of violence. You want way more than 260 people dying. You want every single Palestinian to be fucking executed ruthlessly in the streets so that you can build another fucking theme park in Gaza. You fucking baying pig. You fucking bloodthirsty, violent. Ah uh, yes, of course, it's the only way they can break out of the horrifying prison of colonialism. There's just no other way to decolonize, so we just have to do it, guys. The poor oppressed Palestinians just have no other choice but to support Hamas, man. Y you just gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, that, that, just, that just is how it be, yo. Okay, seriously now, what Hassan Abi just said there is so wrong you could probably write an entire 200-page book on why it was wrong. Mainly, the core component of what he was saying is just not true. The Palestinian people have had several chances in the the past to distance themselves from Hamas and have had at several occasions chances at decent peace deals. But because their ultimate goal is to not give up one grain of the region, they've effectively locked themselves in this cage that Hassan is complaining about. Again, I'm not saying Israel is innocent here, but rather it doesn't matter because you would have to be unironically clueless to not understand how what Hamas does is both counterproductive and evil, and just incentivizes even more violence. Which is funny because Hassan Abi seems to understand this. He recognizes that there is a cycle of violence going on in the Israel-Palestine conflict. But because of ma decolonization and ma prejudice plus power and all the other muhs and all the other dumb things that the far left socialists believe in, he's only able to recognize one side of the equation and view it from a false dichotomy of oppressors and oppressed. So again, very wrong, very deranged takes, but also very much in line with how these people tend to think, and thus entirely in line with what I would expect from them. And again, I'm not saying that the Zionists are correct. There are many things they could do better that would incentivize Palestinians into accepting a more favorable deal, which they have not done. Just that you can't treat their actions as a free pass for what Hamas is doing. By having Hamas as their dominant political faction, Palestine has completely screwed itself, and people who just fail to see that are living in a dream world. But again, because the far left can only look at things from their oppressor oppressed dichotomies, they're forced to continuously generate these insane takes. This should rightfully be a wake-up call to the centrists for them to finally get up and finally realize just what they are up against. And that's why my final message for this video shall be directed towards any centrists who may be watching right now. Hello there, centrists! We are currently experiencing a situation where the far left is showing you who they really are. And I am here to tell you and explain why that what we are witnessing is not a 180. It is not some strange situation where they have suddenly lost the plot. Rather, what you're seeing from them is exactly what you should expect from far left dogma and is in fact what they have always believed.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a tip on my Ko-Fi, and leave a comment for the algorithm and all that stuff. Till next time.